All right. Hello, class. Uh, welcome to Sonic Shoe 101. I am your professor, uh, Jess. Homework is never due. And please uh, keep your arms and your eyes inside the right at all times because we're, we're going for it. All right. Uh, if you are looking for something different than any other Sonic Shoe Explained, Sonic Shoe Examined video out there on the internet, you will not find it here. It is going to be the exact same deal as all those other videos. It's just that my friends like my voice when I explain it. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. Um, I know quite a lot about Sonic Shoe because I have been obsessed with this individual um, since I was like about 14. So that's why I know so much about it. But I am human and I am going to get some things wrong. I will probably go back on myself and like... Uh, like, be like, oh, I forgot this, let me go all the way back, or whatever, but, yeah, anyway, um, also, uh, I've been informed that it's been a year anniversary since I did this sort of thing in person, uh, yes, I did this IRL to my friends, and I don't know why they still talk to me, because I did that to them, but, in fact, they're my friends so much that they wanted me to do it again. So that's why I'm doing this. But, um, it has been a year since I've really dove deep into this subject, so I don't really... Huh. Also, some disclaimers. So, um, the whole thing about Quick's name, uh, CWC, it's really confusing. And a lot of the early story literally has to do with masculinity. So, for the sake of things making sense, when I am talking about quick in the comic, I will use he pronouns. If I am talking about quick in real life, I will use she pronouns. It's gonna get confusing, but we're gonna try to do that as best we can. Um, yeah. So, our story begins in Virginia, America. In 1982, I don't have a tripod, so I have to, like, squat. It's a lot. Um, in 1982, there was a little baby born, and that baby's name at birth was Christopher Weston Chandler. But, um, <sighs> it's really funny. So, at, like, five years old, um, Quick's dad brought the kid to a, like a, like a Chuck E. Cheese or something like that or something. There was a guy in a bear costume and the guy in the bear costume was like, hey kiddo, what's your name? And, uh, uh, it was said Christopher, but the bear didn't hear. <laughs> so the bear said, oh, Christian? Christian, what a nice name. And <laughs> I'm serious? Bob Chandler, Quick's father, and also Quick was like, um, yeah, this is a sign from God. I'm changing my name legally to Christian. Which, um, is a lot. <laughs> that's a big, that's a big jump. Uh, also, for the sake of this lecture, Quick and Christian are gender neutral terms. Uh, cause CWC is just the initials. And, uh, Christine still contains Chris in it, so Christian is still gender neutral. Also, it's so funny. <laughs> Just putting Chan at the end of your- I guess it makes sense, because the last name is Chandler. <laughs> but it's also like, okay. <clears throat> so anyways, Virginia, in the 80s, growing up, um, having autism, Thing, things happening. Obviously wasn't the best upbringing. Uh, Bob and Barbara, which are the name of Quick's parents, uh, were a bit neglectful and also a bit, you know, like, it's alright that my little angel has a little bit of a, a, a learning disability, but if we just treat the kid like normal and put him in normal school, that'll be fine, you know? Uh, survival of the fittest, adapt. <laughs> That's not how it works, guys. Guys, you have to treat the people like they need to be treated. 
so that they can, uh, you know, have the things that they need. It's like feeding a gluten intolerant person only bread. Be like, you'll get over it. Nope. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, so all that happened. Quick grows up, goes into high school. Uh, high school is the best time of Chris Chan's life. Chris has a great time. Why? No one knows, because high school blows, but it's probably the, you know, people not being able to run away and having to be around all the time or something. Because uh, when you get into college, it's kind of more like, all right, we're in classes, but I can just, like, leave after, or I can, like, not show up, and it's my fault because I don't pay, uh, and stuff like that. So it's a lot- for most people, they find it a lot, uh, less, uh, panicky, less anxious, because it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you paid to be here, so anything you do, it's like, yeah, uh, you don't have to be around people or whatever. Uh, but Chris, er, uh, the opposite of what she wanted- <laughs> Complete opposite. So, high school was great for quick, and then graduation happens, complete just depression mode, because there's no longer that structure, you know? And in high school, quick invented uh, Bionic the Hedgehog, who is an orange hedgehog who plays basketball, and that's it. That's all. That's it. Just an orange hedgehog that plays basketball and is Sonic's brother. Honestly, I love him. And also, on the 27th of March of the year 2000, yes, I have the date. I don't think the, I got the day right, but it was definitely in March of the year 2000. Uh, Chris Chan invented Sonic Chu. It was, it was in March of 2000. We actually have the exact day that it happened. So, it was this high school, um, like, art class or something that had a, an assignment to make a CD cover. But, one of the rules of the assignment is that you can't use copyrighted characters. So, Quick was like, okay, okay. I can't use any of my copyrighted characters. Okay, I need to come up with something new. Okay, I love Sonic. I love Pokemon. I love Pikachu. If I take Sonic and I take Pikachu and I just, just put them together, that's a, that's a new thing. That's a new thing. A new thing that could be mine. And it's not copyrighted. It's an original character. And it's mine, and I can sell it. <clears throat> and anyways, uh, <laughs> Chris put Sonichu on the CD cover and turned it in, and claims to have gotten an A. But who knows? Uh, <laughs> I we, we we don't have any proof of that, so I feel like no. But also maybe you know whatever you know Vi Virginia high schools. Who's gonna give that much of a crap? You know, as long as you turn it in. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's when Sonichu was invented. And then, um, very soon after, uh, well, that was C Christian's senior year of high school. So, uh, she graduated. And then she started going to college. Uh, Piedmont, Virginia Community College. Right? PVCC. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um... So, started going to college, and still had this Sonichu idea just tumbling around in our brain. So, <coughs> sorry. So, uh, what Chris would do is she would make these signs called attraction signs. Basically being like, uh, and I know this has nothing, all of this, it's not happening yet. None of this is happening yet. Don't, don't worry about it. So, uh, attraction signs that say, hey, I'm looking for a boyfriend-free girl. <laughs> um, and I, uh, want a girl that's like this. I want her to be white. I want her to be 18 years old to whatever Chris's current age was. 
don't really remember. Um, 18 to 20 something. Doesn't smoke. Goes to church. Uh, not black. Not autistic. And all this stuff, like, um, just like this laundry list of like, like, hey, be perfect, please. And then also don't have a boyfriend either. And would just like sit in like, uh, the commons or like next to the cafes or whatever. I don't really know the layout of the college. So, you know, in general, pop, uh, pub, public areas, public areas and would just like sit and like play on a DS and have this sign in front advertising, hey, be my GF. And, um, that is not, uh, in school rules. Nope, that's, that's against the rules. You can't do that. Um, technically soliciting sex and stuff like that. Um, uh, probably harassing people on school grounds. Like, like 50 different rules being broken. So, gets called to the dean's office. The dean's name was Mary Lee Walsh. This is actually important. The dean's name was Mary Lee Walsh. Remember that. Um, so, uh, gets called to the dean's office. The dean's like, you can't do this. And Chris is like, why are you impeding my love quest? And, yeah. <coughs> so, Mary Lee Walsh is like, stop. Don't do it anymore. And Chris is like, okay. So, she goes back and she's like, okay, but I, I need a love quest, so I need a way to get girls to know that I'm looking for a girlfriend. So, with that sonnet you, idea still in the head. Chris Chan makes this thing called Sonichu News Dash, which is like this newsletter about things that are happening around the school. And it's like three pages long. One page is the news. The other two pages are, hi, I have a website for Sonichu, please read it. And also, um, I need a girlfriend. And that's, that's what it turned into. It was, it was no longer a sign. It was like a newsletter that had the contents of the sign in it. So it was almost the same thing. Um, there's a few, uh, issues of this, I think. And, uh, uh, Quick was still going to classes and stuff. Uh, getting an associates in computer-aided drafting and design. <sighs> I just realized... What a loser I am. <laughs> I know all these facts just off the cuff. I just know them. I just know them. <sighs> Anyways, so, an associate's in computer-aided drafting and design. <laughs> which t took quick uh, five years to attain. Which I'm not going to fault her for. Because I, I'm also on that taking way too long to get an associate's grind. We love a very slow learner. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so, uh, then the dean, Mary Lee Walsh, finds out about Sun Issue News Dash and is, again, like, hey, we can't do that. No, that's also still not good. And Quick was like, but it's a newsletter. And they were like, Okay, stop though. <laughs> and um, so that stopped. Uh, I think Chris even put up like a petition somewhere, being like, hey, they're making me stop the newsletter. T go yell at them and tell them that the newsletter should keep going because you guys love it. No one went because no one liked it. <laughs> <coughs> and then. Quick just gave up the ghost and made another attraction sign. And then the dean, again, for the third time, was like, Okay, come back to my office. Alright, you're sitting in my office. Come on. We can't do this. Stop with the attraction sign. And, um, uh, Chris Chan 
uh, recounts it as, like, she was, like, yelling at him, which she could have done, or could have not done. We don't really have any proof other than what Chris said. But, uh, I mean, if I was bringing back someone for the third time to tell them, uh, I might raise my voice a little bit, but that's because I get mad. <sighs> that's because I'm, I'm crazy. You see me? Do you see my energy right now? Anyways, uh, yeah, and so... After that, uh, something, something, um, Chris started, like, sort of, not, like, threatening Mary Lee Walsh, the dean of the college, but, like, sent her a little doodle of an angry face, and just generally, like, putting mud on her name and stuff like that. So the dean was like, okay, cool, so... We're gonna put you under review, and we're gonna see if we can't get you out of this college for a little while. So that happened, and Quick was suspended from the college for a year, and would have to go through, like, psychiatric evaluations and do some other stuff if uh, she wanted to go back. And she did those uh, psychiatric evaluations, and the psych was like, you need meds and also further therapy. Please continue going to therapy. But since it wasn't mandated, she did not do that. She did not get the therapy that the psych said she should. Um, and she just went back to the college and got her degree. And, uh, yes. And after college was done, Christian didn't really have anything to do. Um, so with all that free time, <coughs> and with this Sonichu idea that keeps being uh, silenced by the masses, uh, what do you think she did? She made a comic about it. It is now the year 2005. You know, um, Quick turned 18 in the year 2000 and invented Sonichu. Five years passed, uh, so got the degree, the CAD degree, and now... Five years later, issue zero of Sonichu, uh, unemployed, uh, was temporarily employed at a couple places. The only one that I really know about is a Wendy's job where, um, I'm out of breath, uh, but the Wendy's job, she, she, uh, only worked there for a short while and got fired after making a Donald Duck impression at a young child and made the kid cry. Um, and so, unemployed, no, uh, no education, uh, well, yes, education, but not being educated currently and all that stuff. You know, a bunch of free time. So, comic time. This was posted to some website, domain that Chris got. <coughs> Which is now defunct because it was hosted back in 2005. I know we're millennials, but you really, really have to reel your mind back to those olden days, alright? Just really put your mind back in that sort of vibe. 2005. Okay. Also, the, um, the titles for the comics make no sense at all. So, this is issue zero, and it contains episode zero, number zero, number one, and number two. That's not how comics are numbered. It's not. So, um, issue number zero, it, uh, the cover art is, uh, quick, um, pointing off in the distance, going, Go, Sonichu! Zap to the extreme! And then Sonichu, um, who, by the way, if you haven't seen the art for this uh, comic, please Google it now so you can see what I'm talking about because I really, I really cannot state how unprofessional it is in words. Um, the cover of this issue boasts that it is hand-drawn. So, yep, um, and Chris is going, zap to the extreme, and Sanji's going, 
Thank you, I will, father. The way that Sonichu calls Chris father gets really weird <laughs> over time. Anyways, so, <clears throat> episode zero. Don't give me notifications, go away. Uh, episode zero, it starts with, um, so they're overlooking, you know what? Like, the way that it tells the story at first actually kind of makes sense, and it's kind of great. Anyways, I'll, I'll get more into that later, but, so, <coughs> there's a, a Pikachu sleeping on a hill, and then suddenly there's some sort of rumbling, and it wakes the Pikachu up, and it looks over into the distance, and into the distance, there's a city. Um, and in the city, there's this commotion happening, and it turns out that the perfect, perfect chaos monster from one of the Sonic games, I don't know, I didn't play Sonic, but it's, it's making a ruckus in the city, and Sonic the Hedgehog is over there. Yes, Sonic the, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog is, uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, over there, fighting it and trying to make it stop being evil, and the Pikachu gets up and goes in to see what the nonsense is and walks onto this bridge and, uh, then the perfect chaos monster slaps Sonic and slaps him right into the Pikachu. And, uh, uh, oh, 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 Sonic is also powered up by the Chaos Emeralds. He's, he's super powered by the Chaos Emeralds. So, um, he slaps him into Pikachu and the, the power of the Chaos Emeralds makes some sort of thing happen where their DNA mixes. I don't know. And a rainbow comes out of the, uh, collision. And, um... I guess Sonic is somehow still super powered. But anyways, so with this collision, what do you think happens to both entities of Pikachu and Sonic? Now, there are some uh, rational explanations or, or assumptions that can be made. <coughs> the thing that most people think happen is that when they collide, they become one thing. This is not what happens. Some people think that when they collide, they separate, but they also make a new thing. This is not what happens. When they collide, um, Sonic rubs off, Sonic rubs off on the Pikachu, um, and goes off and is fine. But the Pikachu turns into Sonichu. Yes. This is the most obvious conclusion. <coughs> Gosh. Hold on. That's better. Okay. So, yeah. So, there's still two entities. Sonic is still Sonic. The Pikachu is no longer a Pikachu. And yes... This is slightly existentially terrifying, and no, it is not really brought up in any series capacity at all. It does have a glancing mention, but God, not enough. Anyway, so, uh, Sonichu and Sonic team up to beat the perfect chaos monster. But, you remember that I said a rainbow came out of their collision. That rainbow goes all the way across town, and it somehow, very, um, coincidentally, hits a Raichu. What a coincidence, right? Not only does the rainbow hit anything, it also hits another Pikachu-like creature. But anyways, the rainbow hits the Raichu, and the Raichu turns into a Rosichu, which is the female form of a Sonichu. Kind of like how Nidorans have two different types, if they're male or female. You know, it actually kind of, it's not that horrible in the realm of Pokemon. Um, but yeah, it turns into the first Rosichu. But this uh, Raichu actually had a trainer. And the trainer's name was Kel. 
And so Kel comes out and suddenly her Pokemon can talk and she's like, oh my god, what the... <coughs> and that rainbow continues to do stuff for the next, uh, frickin', uh, uh, until, like, somewhere around here. It, like, keeps doing stuff for the next four years. That, that rainbow is really important, guys. <laughs> so don't forget about it. So anyways, so, uh, uh, for now that Raichu doesn't do anything. But back to Sonic and Sonichu, they beat the perfect chaos monster, they win and they whatever, and they... Ah, a faceless crowd cheers for them. They're like, yay, thank you so much. And uh, uh, then, I think, literally at the end of this uh, episode, we actually see Chris in the comic. And um, he goes up to Sonic and Sonichu and's like, Hi, as the mayor, thanks for saving the town. And they're like, no problem, man. And, um, it ends on, I think, Sonichu retrospecting about, it either ends on Sonichu retrospecting about how brave Chris is for not having a girlfriend but still trying, um, or it ends on Sonichu retrospecting about how weird it is to not be a regular Pikachu anymore. And that's the end of episode one. Completely, uh, yeah. A very good explanation by me. I am so straightforward all the time. Um, right now we're at, like, f 26 minutes. I think I could get the next two out by then. Um, so, uh, episode two, Genesis of the Love Punks. Oh, by the way, at this point in time, no one really knows about, uh, Chris's presence online. Like, 4chan hasn't discovered it. Uh, any of the other places haven't, haven't discovered it yet, so this is just Chris Chan putting out stuff into the ether. No one will discover Chris Chan's existence until, I think, uh, freaking uh, episode 12, maybe. S something around there. 12 or 13, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. So no one knows about any of this, so it's just, you know... It's, it's untainted as of yet. So, episode one, this is where the, uh, Rosichu and Sonichu actually meet, and it's super gross. Um, so, Rosichu is just in the woods, staring into a river, for some reason, and <coughs> Sonichu has been wandering out in the wilderness because with his new Sonichu body... When he was a Pikachu, he knew what to forage for and he knew what to eat. But now that he's a Sonichu, he doesn't understand his diet and he's about to die. He's about to starve of hunger. <laughs> and so he sees Rosichu by the water and he's like, Whoa! Hot mama! That one's like me! I obviously have to get in that immediately. So he stalks her home. <laughs> and, um... Uh, <clears throat> uh, and, um, Rosichu walks home to Kel's house, where she lives, and is like, uh, hey, uh, I'm so alone because I'm a freak of nature and, uh, my species of Pokemon did not exist until, like, a week ago, so I'm alone in the world, and Kel's like, hey, do you want to date one of my Pokemon in my roster, including this Dragonite that is ten times your size? And, uh, Rosichu was like, absolutely not. And then, knock at the door, guess who's there? It's Sonichu. And he's pretending like he did not literally stalk her home. And Rosichu is immediately like, oh, woo, that heart eyes! And lets him in, and they eat, uh, Brunswick stew. Why do I remember the stew? Um, and they talk about their favorite color or whatever. And, uh, I don't remember. I don't think anything else really happens. Uh, they go out and they sit under some really badly drawn fireworks and their tails twine in the shapes of hearts. And it's definitely mega cute. It's not weird at all. And I think that's the end of that. That one's pretty short. 
And then episode two. This is the last... This is the last one of uh, issue zero. <clears throat> so, it's called uh, Sonichu vs. Nate Cirque. I would recommend... You can't see it from here. So I would recommend looking that up. So you can see the spelling. And you will notice... Nate Cirque is literally... Christian backwards. It's it's literally Christian backwards. So, um, how this happens is uh, Kel has taken in Sonichu, so I guess he's one of her Pokemon now. Um, and uh, horrible, uh, weird, misogynistic joke about women going shopping. Kel sends them out to go shopping. And Sonichu is in charge of making sure that Rosachu doesn't spend too much money. But uh, Rosachu keeps finding these deals, like 50% off. Wow, what a what a bargain, or whatever. And they go, and they go to the food court, and they eat uh, burgers. Uh, but Sonichu gets grossed out because there's because there's pickles on his burger. This is in reference to a real-life occurrence that Chris had in which, um, there was a girl who, oh gosh, no wait, no, that didn't happen yet because the trolls haven't found Chris. Uh, Chris doesn't like pickles because they're phallic. <laughs> even, even sliced pickles, uh, just doesn't like pickles at all. And, um, there's also an incident later in which a troll goes on a date with Quick and, uh, out of the blue, this guy in a pickle suit comes out, it's, it's planned, but he comes out and he steals the girl and the girl and the man in the pickle suit pretend to go, go off and date each other and it's... Mmm, so funny. But the guy is in the pickle suit because it's already established that Chris hates pickles. Anyways, so Sonichu and Rosichu eat pickles at the food court, whatever. And then this... Oh my god, also the art in this. So the mall that they're at has a tiled floor. So it's like a grid, right? So you would think that someone with a computer-aided drafting and design degree would be able to draw a grid floor. Please Google this issue and look at the art. Please. This is the thing every single time I talk about this issue, I have to bring up that the grid on the floor is really bad. Anyways, so... There's this, uh, uh, like, the ceiling of the mall is this glass dome or whatever, and this guy on a Zapdos just crashes through it. It's a Zapdos, right? It has to be a Zapdos. Was it a Moltres? No, it's gotta be a Zapdos, because I remember the- yeah, it, it's- yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so this guy on a Zapdos crashes through, and, um... Uh, yeah, um, <coughs> so, he comes in, and he's, he, oh, he snatches up Rosachu from Sonichu, or just from her chair, and, uh, uh Rosachu is su suddenly, like, this big, as opposed to the huge Zapdos, even though that's not how the sizes work at all. Um, snatches her up and says, I got her, Sonichu, I'm your, I'm your enemy for no reason. I am stealing her. And Sonichu's like, let her go. And he's like, no, I'm mean. And, oh, he looks like an idiot. He's got these goggles on his head, but they just look like a coconut bra and stuff like that. Anyways, um, so, yes, and they fight and, oh, I'm really trying to remember anything that happens. It's, I think it's just a bunch of fight pages. I don't really remember. Um, 
and uh, eventually Sanichu wins because he just does, and he does a bunch of moves that are not in Pokemon move sets. Um, if you read this along with the lectures, um, it's a fun game to try to keep track of the Pokemon moves that Sonichu does, or any of the characters do, because they are usually not matching to types whatsoever, or sometimes completely made up. So, that's a fun game. But, yeah. And, uh, then he kicks, he kicks the feet of the Zapdos, so it drops, uh, Rosichu. And also, at this time, he has, uh, done a double team or something, to make a bunch of versions of himself, even though that's not how Double Team works. And they all stand in a circle around the Zapdos, and they zap it, which I don't think would work too well, because it's a Zapdos, but whatever. Um, and then the guy, uh, Nate Sirk, Nate Sirk, he goes, Ah, foiled again! And he goes, Go Raikou! And he pulls out a Raikou, but all he uses it for is to run away. He just rides on its back and runs away. Even though that, if you have a Raikou in your back pocket, just keep fighting, dude. Uh, but anyway, so he leaves, um, and later we learn that this wasn't completely pointless, but when you read it, it seems like it's just completely pointless. Like, there was no reason for this to happen, it just sort of happened. But anyways, um, yeah, he saves Rosa Chu, and she's like, oh, my hero! And I think something else happened to the end, but I don't really remember. But anyways, uh, so that's issue zero. Uh, the first issue of Sonichu to come out. Uh, I think we covered a lot in this episode, and I probably forgot a lot, but I think that's good enough for now. Um, in the next episodes, we will get to the rest of the issues that were done in 2005. Quick managed to pump out, uh, one, two, three, four issues. Wait, maybe five issues in 2005. Because... She had nothing to do. Just free time bonanza. Absolutely nothing going on. Um, there continues to be absolutely nothing going on, too. But in that time, it was a different time, you know? No trolls, uh, no weens, just living it up in complete monotony. So, anyways, yeah, that about wraps it up for me. Um, I will see you in the next one.